is Craig McDonald, Auburn's newest defender, a top 10 defender on this defense. Also, does Auburn have a real issue when it comes to adding a transfer portal guys on the side of academics? We talk about all this on today's Locked On Auburn. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Day. We're still talking about Craig McDonald. The I, I think he's a stud. The the transfer safety from Iowa State, and also some academic questions that could be impacting how Auburn approaches the transfer portal. It's a Tuesday, so we're joined by Auburn message board legend Charlie Five himself, the most handsome man on any message board. I want to get your thoughts on Craig McDonald before we jump into anything else, man. Uh, number one. We've always talked about the second half of the portal and how what type of players you're going to be able to add there. And I think you got one of the best players that you could possibly add in this late period. Um, comes from the Big 12. Um, Matt, Cam- I mean, Iowa State, Matt Campbell's a great coach. That they, they throw the ball a lot. He, he, he's ranked really high on uh, pro football focus, good size. Uh, and, man, you just put Zach on somebody and he just makes it happen. Um, Zach right. Ethers just makes it happen, and uh, I think this kid's going to be – I think he's probably going to play early and often um, and, you know, hopefully be an impact early. I think so, too. I mean, really, this edition um, kind of goes against everything you and I have been saying the last few weeks, so like the type mm-hmm. of guys that you're going to get over the next – I want to uh, correct uh, – real quick, I've heard a coach call him Dazzling. I don't think it's Dazzling. I think it's Dazzling. Which coach said that? Uh, just a staffer. He's a guy on staff. It's they say dazzling. They call him Daz. That's his nickname. His short is short. they call him Daz. So I'm just, fine just, with it. Just I'm throw cool. that out there. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. He has to be used to it at this point. He oh has yeah, to be. for sure. He has to be. People yeah, call him people, Blackberry. I mean, come on. And other things. No, but uh, he. Uh, I, I just. Th- <laughs> no, I mean, I think people read it and they're like, surely it's Dazalin. It's not Dazzling. But no, I think it is Dazzling. They call him Daz. That's, his, that's uh, what they call I, him I think before. it's great. I think it's great. But I, I think most of us expected, and you and I kind of laid the groundwork for this as far as setting expectations for what Auburn was going to go out into the portal and bring back to Auburn, yeah. was it was going to be similar to Warsham, Daz Warsham. Guys that, okay, you can talk yourself into their upside, but not going to be a, a, an impact in 2022. And then they're like, no, no, no. We're going to go out and get guys that could potentially start. Yeah. Uh, go out and get a guy that is going to battle for uh, for starting reps or at least really solid part of the rotation as far as reps are concerned with McDonald. Yes. And to me, I mean, you look at a guy that played 400-plus snaps in 2021 as a redshirt freshman, I'll take it. I will absolutely yeah. take that. And uh, he showed traits. He shows physicality. Um you know, some folks were kind of commenting on YouTube and shocker, you know, folks are going to kind of diss these targets that Auburn adds. They beg for starter starting experience and then they get it and then they're upset. But it's like, well, he got nuked by Clemson in the bowl game or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, like. Let's sorry. base it all on one game of a redshirt freshman. Let's just That's base right. the whole thing. Some yeah. People, yeah. People sometimes. Um, you can't make yeah. them happy. Let's let uh, Zach Etheridge, one, bring him in, and two, coach him up. I, I think it's going to be okay. I think he's young. Be- he's young, man. We got I, him for a, we got him for a while. Got him for a while. I mean, this to me, this is like landing a four star safety, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's a guy, he may not be a starter right off the bat, but he's going to be definitely be, see the field. And um, like I already said, he's great size, 6'2, 190, 200. Um, Lurk, he could be that lurker that I've all, I've been waiting on. So, uh, looking forward, looking forward to it. I mean, he could be the fifth safety slash nickel. I think when yeah. you look at, I mean, Donovan Coffin is going to play one of those. Zion Puckett's going to be in that rotation. Um, I, I I think Marquise will be in that rotation. Bridges probably. I think he's earned it at this point. But it's like he could be the guy after that. And if you're the fifth defensive back as far as safety slash nickel. You're going to play. You're going to play. When you look at his total snaps that he had at Iowa State last year, and of course, this is not perfectly transitive, 
but he would have ranked, I believe, 13th in Auburn's defensive pecking order in regards to um, total plays, total snaps played. And yep. he would have been right behind by Darius Knighton. And it's like, okay, if you could give me something similar to by Darius Knighton for multiple seasons in a system, we would all take that in a heartbeat. Easily. Easily. Easily take it for sure. Uh, I'm, yeah, uh, I, by Darius Knighton, like we loved him towards the end of the year, but that was it. We just got one one season out of it. We essentially just added the same thing, and uh, we're going to have him for at least two to three more years. So I like to pick up. I'm I, I'm not going to be there's there's number one. There's not a whole lot of negative you can find, but I'm not going to be ever going to be negative on the guys that we add at this point in time because we know what we're getting. But we just found a possible starter um, in, on this side. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we've done nothing but set ex- like lower the expectations on this show, and then you're going to get mad when we talk like positively about a guy that can can come in and play in 2022 and be a, a role player. I mean, yeah. dude, even if he's on special teams, this dude is playing this year. You yep. know what I mean? And it's just it's like out. I don't care if it makes your kickoff coverage better, your punt coverage better. It doesn't matter. He's going to be on the field, and he will make some form of Auburn's football team better in whatever role he plays in 2022. And that's something you should be excited about. Don't come in and hate on that. That makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. Not at all. Um, All right, so could McDonald be a top 10 player, defensive player on Auburn's roster? I think you can make the case for it with what he did in 2021 compared to what Auburn did in 2021 defensively. I want to explain my reasoning Next, right here on Locked on Auburn. But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar. All right, look, they've got these new things with Built Puffs, their birthday cake. Look, it was my kid's birthday over the weekend, and my wife bakes cakes for a living. And it's like, man, birthday cake is so good. But then these birthday cake puffs show up at my door from Built Bar, and I'm eating this, and it's like, this tastes just as good as the cake. And you look at it, and it's like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but 150 calories just nine grams of sugar and 16 grams of protein. It's delicious. It is so, so good. And I encourage you to head over to built.com to check out these birthday cake puffs, as well as a ton of other different flavors that they have. Promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off. That is at built.com. Charlie Five, I've been doing some stats of the day every day. Yeah. Um, and... Yesterday, the stat of the day was about McDonald. We're going to talk about McDonald for a few days here. But it was, okay, Pro Football Focus gave Craig McDonald an overall grade, defensive grade of 71.1 last year. Mm -hmm. If he were on Auburn's roster last season, he would have been tied for the seventh overall defensive rating with Zacoby McClain. Now, this is not a perfect version of a transitive property here, but it's still fun to talk about because it's May. Um, so if if he would have been on the roster and had the exact same performance, he would have been tied with Zacoby. So it would have been Roger McCreary at 89.9, Colby Wooden at 80.2, Derek Hall at 76.6, Smoke Monday at 75.6, Arkees Burks at 72.3, Eku Leota, absolute unit, 72.3, and then Zacoby McClain and Craig McDonald tied at 71.1. I like Am it. I overreacting when using this kind of list to say, I'm not saying, Hey, this guy's going to be as a Kobe McLean type good, but I'm just saying like this dude has a role on this team. I don't think you're overacting at all. I mean, all we can go by are um, no, it's not perfect apples to apples comparison, but uh, you got a guy that scored what he scored in a um, conference that throws the ball. I feel like a lot more than the sec does. We're catching up, right. um, but more exposure to bad grades, more exposure to uh, failures, more exposure to getting beat in that grade, uh, you know, dropping significantly. Um, I think it's, I think it's a definitely a positive to look at. You got a guy who, um, I mean, those are some pretty solid players that had really good years um, last year, and he ranks, he had just as good of a year from a pro football focus standpoint. That, um, you know, I mean. Smoke Monday is 75. Uh, that that's you know that could be two plays. You know, two different two types of plays different. You know, you know what I mean. I, I don't know exactly how the 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 grade formula works, but you know that could be right there. And you know, from you know one of his interceptions may have put him over the put him over over the sure. the you know the 71 mark. But 
I mean, why why wouldn't you be excited? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I don't think he starts the season by any stretch of imagination. Uh, any stretch of the imagination. And honestly, if everybody stays healthy, he probably doesn't start at all. But I do think he is a key part of the rotation. I think it'll yes. be Zion Puckett will be one of the guys. And then in base, it'll be Donovan Kaufman that's next to him. When they go nickel, I think Donovan will move to the nickel spot. And that other safety job, yeah, I think is still wide open. I kind of like Caleb Bridges to win it at the moment. Um, maybe Marquise can, can can fight and win that. I think he was brought in with the intention of him winning it. Um, yeah. I don't think he won it in spring like they kind of maybe wanted him to. Um, but McDonald's going to get on campus and he's going to fight for it. Let's go. I like it. That's a good ad. That's a big ad. Right. Okay. All right. So you you brought up something interesting. Yes. Um, and I was asked this question when I went on a radio show last week. I didn't really have a good answer for him because I hadn't really heard this. Mm -hmm. I've heard a little bit more now. And when you brought up, hey, you know, it'd be fun to talk about this. But the whole progress towards degree issue. And so yes. I think the first time a lot of us were aware of this was – during the transfer portal season last year with Auburn basketball, the Tigers yes. were going to add Desi Sills from Arkansas one, uh, as another wing player. And then he started looking at it, compliance and academic, uh, yeah, academic signing were getting involved. And him transferring, he would not have had enough credits to make a, enough progress towards his degree. And so he wasn't able to transfer. And so he went then to Arkansas State. Right. This apparently has now been labeled a reason that Auburn is not being able to add some of the guys that it wants via the transfer portal. What are you hearing about this? Yeah, so that's been the big uh, that's been the big story uh, lately. Um, you know, um, the the Pearsall wide receiver kid that um, was down between us and Florida for whatever reason, we had to drop him. He was our top wide receiver uh, on the board. He went to Florida. He right. was a the defensive lineman, a former four-star defensive lineman from Texas who was all but committed. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Uh, had to drop him. There's been several um, that we've just had to – couldn't make it work, I guess. Couldn't make the paperwork work. Um, some A lot of electives and stuff like that that wouldn't transfer. Kind of heard a rumor that there was a class that someone took that we were after called Seashell Identification. Uh, check it out if you if you miss that. That was talked about on AuburnLive.com, uh, Jeffrey Lee. Uh -huh. uh, which is which is just <laughs> insane to me. But basically, these kids are coming in, which this kind of shocks me. Sports management, or just uh, sports management, that type of those type of degrees, for whatever reason, don't yeah. exist. Don't exist at Auburn. Um, so my question, my question is, is this, uh, is this a, is this an Auburn thing? Is this just bad luck? Like, how do we get do we do we even attempt to fix it or how much longer do you need to get it fixed? Um, I feel I feel like the the Desi Seals thing should have been a red flag if that's who we wanted to add. Hey, we got some we got some with all the online classes and things like that that are available now. Like, how can we not make this happen? That's kind of that's that's the conversation I want to have and see what you think about that. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, when I was at Auburn, I majored in communication, which is a total joke. Like it is yeah. a total joke. Like my degree is worthless, but that's fine. Whatever. So when you hear all these classes, like I didn't take, I didn't take seashell identification, but I took some pretty, some, some stuff that was like, why is this a college course type yeah. thing? Organic gardening. Um, yeah, right. Shout out pop quiz, man. <laughs> uh huh. There you go. So I, I don't fully, I don't fully know the dynamic and the relationship between like, can Alan Green call a dean? Uh, I, I assume sports management will be in the College of Business. That's just a guess. I don't sure. know that. Um, but, like, can Alan Green call the dean of the business school and say, hey, this is killing us. We need to find the funding to add a sports management degree, which is weird that any SEC school doesn't have that. I think we all can agree on that, especially with, you know, the with NIL now. Let's see, I think it's even more relevant than ever. Yeah. Um, in the transfer portal, too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when other kids are enrolling in that somewhere else and then they want to come to Auburn and it's not here because uh, Desi Sills, if I remember correctly, was sports management. I, I think, think. So. I yeah. Think so. Um, which I walked away from the Desi Sills situation last year. Like, okay, how did it get to that point? Like nobody checked that.
before he committed and we did all the social promotion and all that, like nobody checked that. It wasn't, oh, we need to fix that. That's just not what I walked away from that feeling. It was more of a, why did that happen versus, okay, we need to make sure that doesn't happen again. But if yeah. that's happening over and over and over again and they're checking for it, like if that's supposedly an issue, you got to find a way to fix it. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And to me, this sort of screams Jabba, just Auburn being Auburn, not offering things that some of our competitors could offer. You, you asked, should Alan Green – uh, be able to talk to the deans and do whatever they got to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Brian Harson should be crawling uh, Alan Green every single day trying to figure out how to solve that. You think this happens uh, at Alabama? You think this happens at um, Georgia? I know I've seen arguments the enrollment's bigger, so that allots them more opportunities. You well, can they do try. It. They try. I mean, Stephen Leith wanted to like up the enrollment like crazy, and it yeah. kind of put Auburn, the city, in a, in a hole because they're like, Okay, hold on. You can't just increase enrollment that much, and so they're like, "We gotta, you know, we gotta b make sure more housing developments are being built." And yes, then, but um, so like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly if the if enrollment's part of it or not. You could hire one person to do research on every transfer and find the most degrees, uh, the, the most degrees that these guys are pursuing, like yeah. super easy. Like you could find the most popular sports degrees across the country very simple very easy we're right off the bat we know sports management hello that one needs to be added you could do a quick take you a, a week a week to call and, and, and do and do the research and then boom between online uh between whatever we have to do to make it happen auburn does not has never had that mindset that we just got to make it happen like you got to make it happen um if, if this is truly a thing if this is truly What's keeping us from signing players that we need that want to come to Auburn because of this transfer thing? And we almost um, – I know DJ James struggled uh, with, with some of the stuff because I, I believe Oregon has some weird classes where it's like pass-fail, that's it. There's no – like, and then Auburn, Auburn's scale is you got to have a C or above to, to continue. So, like, there was a lot of – there was a lot of question, and he's having to take a lot of classes now uh, looking good. Like, he should be fine, but he's having to take a lot of classes to – you know, hopefully be able to play in the fall. And I talked about this, you know, you know, weeks ago, but, uh, but yeah, um, you got to make it happen. Like, come, like, come on guys, come on one week of Google searching. We can figure this out. Like, and, 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 and do an online course or something to get these guys uh, credits transferred over and going towards the degree that they want. Now, like you can't just be, it can't just be um, something just outlandish. But, like, sports management does not seem that outlandish. I mean, that's, no. like, what you do to become a coach or uh, an agent, things like that. Um, that's the kind of stuff that, that that goes for. I just – to me, it's just more Auburn – being Auburn type stuff. And it's it's, it's very frustrating, um, especially when it seems like Harson and, and, and the team and, and guys like Zach Etheridge is already a killer. But, like, they're really being aggressive on the trail. And, like, this upcoming season for Harson – is so incredibly important. Like, can't be another six and six or, or four and eight or five and seven. Like, that right. can't happen um, because then the wheels could possibly really fall off. So, well, I, I, I want to add one more thing to that in just a moment, Charlie Five, because I, I don't think this is just about Brian Harson. But give us give us one second. Today's show brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, Bet Online, of course, our partners here throughout the entire network, the entire Locked On Podcast Network. Bet Online is the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Charlie Five and I did a full betting show last Thursday. It was a ton of fun. Be sure to check that out if you missed it. But you can find all the latest odds, news, sports, and developments, including the NBA playoffs, which is uh, coming to a head, as well as Major League Baseball. Um, even uh, fights if UFC is your thing. And then, of course, you know, even NFL and college football futures right around the corner. So check it all out at Bet Online, where the game starts. Charlie Five, I mean, obviously, Brian Harson cares, right? Obviously, yes, Brian yeah. Harson cares about this because he understands if, and we don't know what that number is, and it's a variable, but probably north of seven, seven and five at the worst is kind of what a lot of people are probably expecting. I think yes, if you win yeah. the right six, he probably stays, but well, you know, whatever. That's a conversation we can have later. But this isn't just a Brian Harson thing. Like this, no, is, this, this is an Auburn thing. So even if it's not Brian Harson's issue, 
and it's whoever the next coach is, and hopefully Brian Harson stays and he has a successful season. But like this needs to be fixed for Auburn. Yeah. And yeah. this is going to be a thing for Bruce Pearl. I mean, we already saw it with Desi Sills. This is going to be a thing for Butch Thompson and Auburn baseball. And obviously, you know, with, with all of the women's sports as well, with softball, women's basketball. I mean, Coach Johnny Harris is is trying to build up a program there via the portal. So with any it benefits everybody. No question about it. And so I don't know, I don't know if Coach Harson's talking to the other coaches or not about all of this, but you got to think that he's not alone in this battle. Yeah. You just can't let this can't just be okay, though. This can't just be a oh well, we'll get the next one like that. Nah, I that mean, there's, a chance, there's a chance we lost our number one receiver because of this. Very, very possible. Very, very possible. Or you know, a guy who could possibly be an impact on the defensive line, like they're at, at positions of need. Uh, and who knows if in the pre-portal, like, I mean, maybe there were some guys we missed out on in the pre-portal and it's all all coming to a head now because we're sort of, you know, we got to make something happen and we're having so much trouble makes, making it happen. Um, some of that's on us, uh, but most of it is just, I just don't understand why Auburn people can't pull um, pull in the same direction. I, and it's never been it never been a thing in my life. And I, and I, I don't know that we'll ever see it, but – uh, I just don't – you don't see this happen. You will not see this happen at our rivals who are who are doing what they have to do to make it work. And we're seemingly doing what we got to do to not get in trouble or, or, or whatever. Um, it's just uh, at the detriment of, you know, the success of some of our teams. So it's, uh, so, it's frustrating. Where, where has this storyline – come from is this just message board stuff has somebody on staff said this where where did this kind of come from well obviously i think that some of the staff uses the message boards or uh things like that to sort of get their message out without it being you know totally from like auburn up like news or montgomery advertiser sure. who who can be biased um or at sometimes this is just strictly uh i guess or not i'm sorry maybe a little bit more not quite as biased as what a, uh, a message board would be. So you can kind of spin it in a positive direction, but that's where it sort of first came out. And I've seen, you know, conversations uh, all over the place talking about it. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, yeah. When I went on the, I went on the max round table up in Montgomery and they asked me about it. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not what, sure. I'm not well versed on this. Cause what, I, did they say anything in particular, like how they felt about it? Um, no, no, they just no. kind of asked me, "Have I heard? Had, had I heard anything?" And at that point, I hadn't. Um, then I yeah. looked into it, and it's like, "Oh, okay." You know, I, I saw it on the message board. I didn't realize if it, if it was that was coming from somewhere else or or not. But it sounds like yeah, that's where it is. The pro the the thing is, a lot of times we've we've seen that um, narratives try to get spun through uh, one way or the other through the message board. So like, it's like a PR kind of thing. Like if if something bad happens you see stuff kind of leak to the message boards and then be posted to sort of explain it or whatever. We've seen that sort of trend. Sure. And so this sort of started off as that kind of feel like this is how we're going to spin it to, 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 um, you know, spin it to explain why we've struggled so much adding people through the portal. But that's pretty, that's pretty ballsy move. If you're, if it's a total spin job, because there's kids like Ricky Pearsall, or or I think that's his name, um, who's going to go to Florida uh, over Auburn when it's kind of like we get we didn't want him anyway or not we didn't want him or he he, he would have chose us but we um you know we couldn't have him sort of thing and he could easily refute that like he could easily say nah i wanted to go to florida the whole time and i shut him down like but there's been none of that that's come out because talking about uh that kind of stuff i feel like is sensitive uh information so yeah kids sure. could sort of be um they're very sensitive to that so um I think it's legit. I think if we have a legit problem, it is hampering us, but you got to rally. We got to rally everybody together and we got to get something fixed. And I, and I feel like it could be fixed super easy, super easy, super fast and move on, move on and, and, and try to go start adding players. Yeah. I really do wonder if it's as easy as just adding a major, but then like how much goes into that? Um, yeah. Where does that funding come from? I mean, that school's got plenty of money. Surely you can afford a new curriculum for another major. But sure. Or you drop some that you don't need and add these or or whatever. I mean, but like I said, with the online stuff now, 
it should be it should not be hard at all. Like you can't do everything online, but you can do a lot of it. You can do a lot of it online to sort of buy time to get yourself to where you need to be. Like that's just I just don't I just don't get it. We don't see it anywhere else. Don't see it anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, is there any chance of okay, we're in Auburn, like we're, you know, fully surrounded by like Auburn hearsay and chatter and rumor and talk and news and we're more aware of what's happening at Auburn versus other places, or do you firmly believe it's happening less outside of here? I do. I think it's happening firmly less because people are – they're adding guys in droves, like left and right. Like our rivals are – when's the last time you've seen, like, the if Alabama couldn't get a kid, if um, the Eli Ricks couldn't get in to uh, Alabama, there would be an absolute uproar. Like, that we'd be having the governors get involved. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it, that's sure. not just – but they just seemingly continue to add their who they got to add, and there's no hic- no hiccups. If 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 something would have happened, uh, I mean, I'm just I'm just saying the local and state news that would just be top top of the story, top you know top headline. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So. Charlie Five, thank you for your time as always, my friend. How can people find you, hear you, support you, all that good stuff, bud? Absolutely. Find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore underscore five, AuburnLive.com, the corner message board, and the Locked on Auburn Discord, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Dad Bod Golf Pod. That's another edition of the show in the books. Tune in tomorrow for a War Report Wednesday. And once again, thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day for your second listen go check out our friends at locked on sec chris gordy holding it down over there we'll see you tomorrow right here on locked on auburn